This is Solar Unboxing Round 2. If you got the first video, you're probably wondering three things. One, what was the deal with the missing parts? Two, what's up with the damaged panels? And three, did I order the wrong equipment? Answers to all of those things in this video. We got another package here. Came fresh off the back of the FedEx truck. Happened to be taking the garbage out right when they pulled up to deliver it, which is pretty convenient. Cool little label here that I didn't see. It says, open this package now, exclamation point. When you sign for this delivery, you are stating that you received in good condition. You only have 72 hours from time of delivery to report any concealed damages. If you wait longer, the delivery company and wholesale solar are released from any future claims. No exception, exclamation point, in bold letters. Protect your investment by taking the time to ensure that everything is okay. Hey man, brother. Hey man, protect that investment. Make sure it's okay. I'm with that. So, we gotta get going, because, you know, obviously we have this guy back here. Uh, the frame was damaged on one of the panels. Uh, those were delivered Monday. It is now Wednesday. Yeah, getting pretty close to 72 hour mark here. It's coming fast. Um, so I'm gonna open up this guy, see what we got inside. Missing parts, they're right here. They came in a separate shipment that I didn't know about. So I sent them an email asking about the missing parts. They said it was coming in another shipment and this included both the power optimizers and the installation clips for the wires that I was missing. All right, so power optimizers got them. We should have everything we need now. Have to double check some of these. Some of these I think are maybe more services, right? So they might not be parts. System module upgrade, 14 at $10. I'm like, not sure what that was. Not sure what this is. Free shipping, but dang, that still isn't cheap. So, uh, man, thanks for taking care of that for me wholesale, because that's a, that's a pretty penny. All right, I feel I feel a little dumb, but I just learned this. So, uh, you know, because Google comes in handy, I just figured this out. So what exactly is a power optimizer? I had no idea. Exactly what this guy does, right? Because I wanted to go with microinverters. That was the plan for the back of the system, right? Put them on there. They sent me a string line inverter, which I was like, what? That's not what I thought I was doing. DC to DC power optimizer. What that does, it mounts on the back of the panels and then it treats, so it, it basically makes it so your good old string line inverter here is gonna perform like a micro inverter. So that way if one panel becomes shaded, the rest of the output on all of the other panels isn't going to drop with these. So that's basically what a power optimizer does. So I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. My string line inverter is a set of micro inverters because of these guys. I mean, that's not what it is, but it functions that way because of power optimizers. So that's what these are. I don't know if this holds true in general or not, but it seems like the inverter then with the power optimizers is a little more expensive than just the micro inverters on the back. Um, so for this system, I think the price difference on the two estimates that I got was like six, seven, 800 bucks, something like that. So what was the deal with the damaged panels? If you remember, there was some damage that looked like it wouldn't affect performance and some that looked like it might actually pr affect the performance of the system. So took those pictures, put them in an email, sent them to my sales rep. He got back to me and after reviewing him, he said, there's really not much here that's gonna affect the performance of the panel, so we're not gonna do anything. You're good to go ahead and install them. So what was the deal with getting the wrong equipment? So I had thought that I ordered micro inverters and it turns out I was shipped a string line inverter with the power optimizers coming later. And what happened there? So that's what's gonna take most of this video to answer. What it essentially boils down to is this. That's what you ordered, so tough luck. Nobody likes paying taxes, especially stupid taxes. Because I paid the stupid tax, so hopefully you won't have to. Moral of the story is this. Here is the best advice I have for you. Number one, check, double check, triple check, quadipple check. I don't think quadipple is a word, but it is now quadipple check. What you were buying before you actually buy anything. That's a good idea. Number two, read every line item in your invoice. So after looking at the original quote I got and then what I was actually invoiced and what I actually ended up purchasing, there was a few things that were different. Three, keep all of your quotes straight. So you might start getting different quotes with different 
system components as you compare cost and trade-offs for what might be best for your situation. And you could end up with a series of like, I don't know, a dozen different quotes or half a dozen different quotes. So keep all of those straight so that you know which parts include which components. So when you actually go to order, you know which ones to order. Now, all of these sound like pretty common sense no-brainers. You're like, yeah, that's how I buy everything I ever buy ever. You didn't really need to say any of that. And that's probably true. But like I said, I paid the stupid tax and didn't do any of those. And I probably should have. I really have no record or no recollection of where I indicated that I wanted a string line inverter with power optimizers. I was opting for optimizers, opting for, that's funny. I was opting for the micro inverter rot. The reason for that is with micro inverters, it becomes easy to expand the system in the future. Remember one of my original goals for solar is to cover all of our electrical load for our entire house, including the future electrical growth in case we decide to add an electric vehicle um, or switch over to ductless mini splits in the future for our heating and cooling, which are all things that I plan on being possibilities. And so I wanna be sure I have enough, I can produce enough electricity to cover all of that. So I don't have enough roof real estate on my garage to cover enough electricity. Micro inverters are a pretty easy way to expand the system because if you need to add more panels, you can simply add more panels, hook up another micro inverter and you're good to go. You don't have to get a new sized inverter like you would with a string line inverter. So I thought this would be a great way to expand the system in the future if I do a ground mount system in the backyard or if I decide to put up a nice backyard pergola and mount solar panels on the roof of that. So that's why I was going the micro inverter route. When they called me to tell me that I approved the wrong amount for the AHC transfer, that should have been a red flag for me. Um, but I didn't take the time to actually look at it, right? It was $830 more, whatever it was. And so I just said, okay, I must've just put the wrong amount. I'll just sign this quick and get on with it. What I should have done then is I should have taken the time to relook at everything and it's possible I could have caught that error. I could have realized there is a line item in here that says string line inverter and power optimizers. That's not what I'm looking for. I wanna go the micro inverter route, but I didn't. I didn't take the time to do that because I was already onto the next task, was busy going on with my day and was like, okay, I probably just made an error. That's weird that the price changed, thought nothing of it. So if that happens, uh, take the time to double check, triple check and quadruple check your stuff. Perhaps after reviewing the details, I would have caught the error and been able to say, hey, I'm, I, I don't actually want these. I don't know how this got on here. What I want is the micro inverters. So generally I tend to be pretty organized at least as far as my email inbox goes. And I don't think I mixed up any quotes. So I'm just a little bewildered as to where exactly that might've come from. So I'm really not sure why the equipment got changed or how that happened. From my phone conversation with the sales rep, it pretty much came down to, well, that was the line item that was on your invoice. And so that's what you ordered. So I guess for me, it's kind of tough luck. So I'm still not really sure if this was their fault or my fault. It could have been neither or perhaps both or anywhere really in between. So with that question not really answered, I'm just kind of wondering, was that my fault? Did I make a mistake? Did they make a mistake on their end? Did we just miscommunicate about something? It was the end of the year and so they were pretty busy with different stuff and maybe they just didn't have the time to review all the quotes and they got one piece mixed up with another or something like that. I don't really know. Perhaps the, the micro inverters I wanted weren't available so they switched the equipment over to a string line or perhaps they thought given my different system goals that I explained at the beginning of the sales process that they thought that this would be a better fit for me. I don't really know and was never really told why that equipment got switched or how, um, but this is kind of the equipment I got stuck with. Or was I just sold this last minute because it was $830 more expensive and I kind of just got upsold without noticing? I like to give the benefit of the doubt, but without that question answered, I don't really know. But when it comes down to it, figuring out why that happened and then actually moving forward with a solution now that it has happened are two different topics, right? So the why question probably isn't gonna get answered, which is kind of a bummer, but focusing on solutions moving forward, here's kind of what I got. So in our phone conversation, I asked my sales rep, so kind of what are my options now that I have this equipment and it really wasn't maybe the equipment I wanna go with? Like, what can I do now? Can I return some of the components or do I return the panels or the inverter or what exactly? The response pretty much came down to, well, like, I guess you could, but I don't see why you'd want to because you're gonna to have to pay shipping to get it back to us and then shipping to get the new parts out to you and then you're gonna to have to pay the 15% restocking fee on whatever equipment you end up sending back. So to quote Rumpelstiltskin from Once Upon a Time, all magic comes with a price. So I can get what I originally wanted, but I'm gonna to have to pay for it. So that's what it essentially came down to. That's kind of the situation I'm in. So my options, here they are, as far as I could come up with them as to what I could do. So here are my options. Number one, I could return the panels. I could return these panels, switch them out, buy some 375 watt panels that are a little bit bigger, but will still fit on my roof. And so I'm gonna get a higher system output from those panels versus the three, I forget if they're 310s or 315 watts that I already have. 
That's one option. Number two, I could return the panels and I could return the string line inverter by the new panels, by the new string line inverter, so that it's actually large enough to handle the new system capacity. Because the current string line inverter I have is only 5,000 watts and the new system would be 5,250 watts. So there's 250 watts. I'm kind of missing out on which is like three quarters of a panel. That's kind of useless. Number three, I could return the panels, the string line inverter, and the power optimizers, and I could get the original string line inverters that I've always wanted. So after paying the 15% restocking fee, paying to get the items shipped back out to wholesale, and then paying to get them shipped back to me, we're in the thousands of dollars of range, which if you remember the point of doing a DIY install is to save on the labor that it would have cost you if you had hired a full service full system installer, right? So if you hired a company to just come take care of everything, say, I don't know, it costs you, maybe it costs you 20 grand. If you do it yourself, it can cost you, say maybe 12 or 13. So you're essentially saving that seven to $8,000. Now let's say you buy equivalent systems. So maybe it's a 10 kilowatt system you bought full service installer and a 10K kilowatt system you bought to install yourself. Now, if you're saving seven to $8,000 on that, that will decrease your payback time or your payback period. The payback period is the period of time in which it takes for that system to pay for itself. So maybe instead of taking 12 years to pay back, you installed it yourself, saved on the labor, and the system only takes you, say, seven years to pay back. So that's a pretty good deal, all things considered, that your system would pay for itself five years earlier. Now, these are hypothetical numbers. You can check out separate videos I have on the actual math of all of these things, but that's kind of the illustration. So if I'm talking shipping costs, restocking fee, I'm adding, I'm now I'm in the thousands of dollars range of what I'm adding to the cost of the system. So a lot of these options don't make sense because that defeats the original purpose of me installing it myself, right? It doesn't defeat it entirely, but it starts to erode at that payback period, which is not something I want to do. The less money you spend on a system of the same performance, the shorter that payback period gets. Your system pays for itself quicker and your ROI or return on investment is bigger. So I don't know, rough numbers here. In my case, adding 15 to 30% to the cost just to get some items shipped back and get the other items that I originally wanted doesn't seem to make a whole lot of financial sense. And it's counterproductive to what I'm trying to achieve with a shorter payback period. And then there's a number of options that include not shipping anything back to them so I don't have to pay a restocking fee and I don't have to pay shipping back to them. Four, I could just buy new panels and keep these old ones. Use the new panels in the system and figure out what to do with the old ones. I don't know, 4.1 could be, maybe I just keep them and install them on a different property that I own. 4.2 could be, maybe I sell them on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and try to recoup some of what I would have got out of them. Now I'd have to sell them probably at a discount because people on these sites are usually looking for a discount. But the thing would be, I'd still gonna lose money if I have to pay 500, 600 bucks to ship them back. So maybe I just, maybe it washes out. Five, I could just attempt to reorder the entire system that I originally wanted. Now it's really only a couple of components that are different, but I could just take the system that I have, go install it somewhere else, like on a one of my other rental properties or something, or maybe at my parents' house or at a friend's. Hey, there we go, I could sell it to a friend at a discount, cause that'd be fun, and then help them install it too. I kinda like that one. And then I buy the new system I wanted with the microinverters and just install that on my roof. Or next, I could buy that whole new system that I wanted, install that whole new system, then try to sell this entire system that I got shipped in the first place as a package deal to someone on, to someone maybe Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, whatever. Try to recoup some of the cost. I'm losing track of numbers, but maybe we're on like eight, nine, or 10 or something like that. We'll call this one nine. And so maybe I just take the entire system, I keep it, I order the one that I wanted, put it on my roof, and then I start a solar installation company, hoping that I can eventually use this system on someone else's house that will pay me to put it on. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. Number 10, I could take all of these components, not actually use it as a system, and make some pretty cool art with it. Because, you know, art is cool. Number 11, I could take a sledgehammer and I could put it right through the face of some of the panels and the components and make a crazy video in hopes that it will go viral about like, man smashes solar panels, most expensive sledgehammer smashing he's ever done or some crazy clickbaity title like that. And then um, it would go viral and I'd make all of the money of the system back from however you make money with viral videos. Yeah, that kind of sounds dumb. Oh. 
Number 12, after I smash a panel with a sledgehammer, I still have 13 other panels left. So who knows, we could shoot one with a shotgun, high powered rifle, we could maybe blow one up with Tannerite, we could crush one with a Bobcat, we could do all sorts of things. We could drive on top of it and see how big of a truck a solar panel could support. That'd be kind of interesting. We could throw it off a three story building. You know, I've always wanted to disable the safety on my framing nailer and shoot something with it. We could shoot the panel with it. We could build a giant catapult and launch it across some vast expanse of land because that would be pretty wild. We could see if they float. Maybe they'd make a good boat. And we still got more panels left to do more crazy, insane things. That could work. Destroy panels for fun. Well, that would be cool, don't get me wrong. There's something that just does not feel morally right about destroying something like that that could have produced some awesome solar sun juice energy. Yeah. Lastly, we could do nothing because this problem is just too complex and too complicated and there's too many options. There's at least a dozen more, dozens more that I didn't talk about or mention. And so I'm just so overwhelmed by all that, I'm just gonna give up. And there's a lot easier problems I have to solve and a lot easier unfinished projects that I have laying around my shop and my house that I could just go work on those instead and distract myself and never touch this solar system. Consider the fact that we are expert consumers living in a society that is a consumeristic society. And it's not just that we turn to easier things and easier projects, it's that we go and we buy easier things. And before you know it, we've filled our homes and our garages, not with meaningful projects, but with a bunch of useless projects that we acquired in a frenzy to make a socially acceptable and a psychologically acceptable excuse to not confront the complexity of the projects and the things that we feared. And to add insult to injury, we just wasted a lot of money doing it. So the solar system will just sit in my garage, collect dust as it ages in its cute little cardboard home in the corner, all while it wakes up every day thinking about the existential dread of all of the potential that it had to produce electricity and all of the things that it couldn't be because it never sees the light of day. It's really a lot like that hybrid water heater box that you've probably seen for the last two years in my video just sitting around in my garage. And it's not just the box. The hybrid water heater is actually still in it. It used to be over in that corner, and in fact, I moved it to the other corner of the garage just for this video because I was too ashamed to have that in the back so you would all know that I haven't installed it yet. Hey, I'm not saying that this is a good option, but it is an option. And when we encounter a lot of overwhelming complexity, unfortunately, it's an option we take. Putting off things in the face of overwhelming complexity, it's always something that sounds really dumb or not that overwhelming when you say it out loud. So maybe in fact that's one of the things that you could do is just state it out loud and look at how stupid it is and listen to yourself think about how stupid it is because it is kind of stupid, isn't it? Like it sounds like a dumb idea. The complexity of this project has just gotten so big and so overwhelming that if I just hide it in the dark, it will probably disappear and I'll never have to deal with it or face it ever again. And I'll never have to confront the unknown or the anxiety that comes from having to make that decision. But hey, why not avoid it? Because while sitting in the dark, dusty corners of my garage, the solar system is just going to sprout opposable thumbs, install itself on my roof, hook itself up to my electrical, and produce years of beautiful, reliable electricity powered by the sun, and we will all live happily after in the land. Yeah, that's dumb. And it's not gonna happen. We'll never say those types of things out loud. We'll just quietly believe it. We know that we believe it because that's how we act. That's how we live in the world. That's how projects get put off and papers stay unorganized. That's why clutter appears progressively in our environments over time. Whether it's our house, our kitchen, our room, our shop, our garage, our desk at work. And before you know it, we have successfully avoided the responsibility of bringing all of our strengths, bringing all of our creative capacity to bear upon the world around us in a meaningful and beneficial way. Now avoiding things does seem like a viable strategy to deal with the complexity of life, at least in the short term. This is the double-edged sword. If one side of the blade doesn't kill you, the other will. And if not now, perhaps later. We believe that if we ignore problems or chaos or complexity for long enough, it will just disappear and take care of itself. But problems hidden in the dark don't disappear, they grow. And in that regard, they're not viral, they're fungal. That is, they grow in the dark. It's so like the great poet Homer Simpson said, that's a problem for future Homer, and man, I don't envy that guy. If we ignore a stack of papers or bills, it doesn't get smaller, it gets bigger. Two of our favorite things, right? English and math combined together in a word problem. That sucks. Here, simple word problem for you. If you have 100 weeds in your garden, and each week you weed 10 weeds, at week six, before you go out and weed, how many weeds are left in your garden? The answer isn't 50. It's 100,000 weeds. That's how many are in your garden. Or say in Minnesota after the winter thaw, early in the spring, a 
pothole the size of a small dinner plate appears. Left unattended, by the time September rolls around, that thing will swallow an entire minivan. That's a whole stick family just gone, right? Just eaten up by that monster. Things hidden in the dark, complexity avoided, does not disappear, it gets bigger. So perhaps this video really isn't about an unboxing. Perhaps it's more about the complexity that you and I undoubtedly face every time we take on any project, solar or otherwise, at work or at home, for fun or for business. It really doesn't matter. We're going to face complexity, and complexity is never fun to face, especially when it overwhelms us. Complexity changes with new information, and it doesn't stay the same. Complexity is complex because it keeps shifting on us every time we try to confront it. It's fungal, it grows in the dark. And so maybe the question for you and I is, what are we hiding? And what are we hiding from? Because right now, I wanna hide from a solar system. Really, it's just a little pile of aluminum and glass. It's like, really? Am I so weak, scared, and pathetic that that's what scares me? Yeah, yeah I am. I could just hope that this system will install itself or I could put it off for a while and let future Mike deal with that problem. You've got those things too. So the option that I have is to install this system, the one I have here and now as it is on my roof and make the best out of what I got. And that's the option I'm gonna pursue. But the interesting thing about complexity is as soon as you make a decision, it gets more complex, not always less. So I've decided to install this, but then the complexity rears its head and you start to wonder, a plethora of things. For example, what if this is the wrong decision? How do I know? How do I know that I installed the right system? How do I know that I got the right components? How do I know that this system, once I install it, will integrate with a future system that I want to install? How do I know that this one is gonna be compatible with my utility company when I knew that the other one was? How do I know? How do I know if I made a mistake and ordered the wrong parts? Or how do I know if I didn't get taken advantage of and upsold parts that I were more expensive and I didn't need? Or how do I know that maybe they had no idea and they were just made a genuine mistake? Or how do I know it wasn't just a communication error? And how do I know that I won't regret this decision in the future? What if I install the system and it didn't get in the future? What if I made the wrong decision? How do I know if I made the wrong decision? What if it's the wrong decision? Well, of course it is. Like, what do I know? Nothing. I know nothing about any of this stuff. So of course it's going to be the wrong decision. It's not going to be the right or perfect decision. Of course it's wrong. It's not like I have the slightest clue as to what I'm doing with any of this. So I want to return to my original premise at the beginning of this series. We're just building Legos. The way the pieces go together is a little bit more complex. They're life-size. Some of them are electrified and can kill you. But we're still just building Legos. And what do you do when you put Legos together and you build something and you put the wrong thing together? You take it apart and you try again. It is that simple. It's not easy, but it is simple. If, you're, if you and I are gonna make things better by building better things, sometimes we don't know what the better things are until we've built the worst things. And it's only in building the worst things that we then become people who have enough wisdom and courage to know how to build the better things. Or to state that another way, one of the things that I believe, and you might believe this too, is that we shape our work, but our work also shapes us. So it's in trying to build things, make things, create things, in doing our work, it's not just that which we're working on that's the work, we are the work also. And in shaping our work, our work shapes us back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together the system I already have. The one I have right here. And how do I know that I won't regret this decision in the future? I don't know. I don't know any of these things. And that's probably okay. So raise your caffeine and here's a toast. With that, may you always kick complexity in the teeth wherever you find it in your life or your project or your creative pursuits. May you not hide things in the dark nor find an excuse to do so. And may the sun always shine on your panels. So raise your caffeine and here's a toast. And with that, I can't do that with a straight face, man. Here's a toast. It's literally a toast. Should I use the burnt side or the light side? You guys like burnt toast or regular toast? Let me know in the comments. I think I'm a fan of the regular. Technically two-sided toast, though. It's the two-sided toast, kind of like the double-edged sword. One side buttery, soft, one side hard and crispy.